My name is Ashley Mosley. I am Pastor Brian's wife, and he just whispered to me, have fun and don't fall. Now, <laughs> it's because I did fall off the stage this morning during warm, like, mic check. You'll see the garland over here is not as garlandy anymore because I fell. And I love our team because they all laughed with me. It was awesome. <laughs> it was a good fall, too. It was very slow motion very for me. Um, nothing's broken. I'm good. Full range of motion. I am so excited to be here with you all this morning. I consider you my family, my friends. Hello, if you're watching on YouTube. Um, by the way, we have a YouTube channel. You can tune in anytime after Pastor Brian gets it up on the YouTube thing, usually on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. And um, all of our messages are archived there. Um, it's really cool when People send us messages, and they're like, I wasn't there on such and such date, but I just listened to this, and it was just, it really touched me at right, at just the right time. Um, today, I'm so pumped to get to talk to you and share the message for the very last Sunday in 2019, and even cooler than that is the very last Sunday in this decade, which is insane. Yes, so cool, so cool. Um, and we have our kids in here, our elementary kids in here. So, guys, I haven't forgotten about you, although I don't have a thousand props for you today, my elementary babies. But if you will follow along with me, if you get yourself a little piece of paper or the church, uh, what is this thing called? Worship guide. Thank you. Um, and any time, kids, listen, any time that I say Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, God the Father, I need you to make a mark. And then after service, I'm going to have you go to my friend, Miss Layla. She's going to wave her hand. She's right up here. And she has candy for you because I want to treat you well, kiddos, for listening today. The adults, sorry. You guys are supposed to be listening anyway. Okay. All right. If Miss Layla passes you as a child, if you act like a child and you're really an adult, that's, you go talk to her about that. Okay, so we are in this really funky time between Christmas and New Year's. Like, I honestly don't even know what today's date is. The only reason that I know that today is Sunday is because I am speaking today. <laughs> And I'm here. That I don't know. Anybody else, like that time between Christmas and New Year's, you don't really know like what to do, who you are, where you are, what you're doing, what you should be doing. And anybody else like me, like you're like, January 1st is coming. Give me all the chocolate. Give me all the fries. Yep. Give me all the things. Anybody else? Anybody going to confess that? Because I'm tearing it up right now. Like, <laughs> I don't know how. I lost count of how many Rolos I ate last night. I started with pretzels, I ended with Rolos, and I've really lost count. And if you look on the back of a Rolo bag and the um, calorie content, I'm not even going to worry about it right now because it is between Christmas and New Year's. And every, any, just any, anything in the diet goes. So that's kind of where I'm at. But also between Christmas and New Year's, this kind of, it's funny how time dictates things. My mic is kind of weird. I'm sorry, I'm going to keep pressing on it. Time dictates things for me. It gets me to thinking, we're ending 2019, we're headed into 2020, and I begin thinking of things I need to change. Like, I don't need to eat Rolos and Dr. Pepper, like they're water and carrots. Um, man, those pants fit last year, they're not fitting right now. Man, what does my Bible study time look like? I begin thinking of... New Year's resolutions. Who in here makes a New Year's resolution? Three people. Awesome. <laughs> Anybody call them goals? You're like, I'm not going to do the resolutions, but I'm going to do goals. Awesome. Anybody like, I'm going to make an attempt, but I know I'm going to fail? Okay, there we go. There we go. Anybody like, I'm not even touching that because I know I am not going to change a thing. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Something for everybody. So right now, my wheels are spinning, even though New Year's Day is like any other day. What day does it come on? A Wednesday? It's like any other Wednesday. We just give it a fancy name and the calendar date. 
changes, but it begins to do something in our hearts and our minds. What do we need to change? Every time I get close to the edge of the stage, I know my friends that were in here were like, don't do that. Ashley, don't do it. So we're ending 2019 and we're going into 2020. That is insanity to me. I have a feeling that the Jetsons would be incredibly disappointed in us. I mean, granted, granted, I mean, we do have, if you look at old Jetsons cartoons, we can now talk to people on our watch. We can talk to people on our screen. You don't even have to go to the doctor anymore. You call up that doctor thing that looks at you on a screen, just like in the Jetsons. But the Jetsons would be disappointed in us because I do not have a hover car. There is no hover cars. My house is not up in the sky. I think they would be like, guys, this was supposed to happen a long time ago, and it hasn't happened yet. I'm personally disappointed that I do not have robot Rosie cleaning my house, cooking my meals, doing my laundry for me. For some reason, it is still me. And I'm disappointed in that. But I, it's got me thinking, really, about the last few decades. So let's go on a little, let's go on a little trip, shall we? It is 2019 right now. Ten years ago, we were ending 2009. Let me tell you where I was in 2009. I had a two-and-a-half-year-old and a, a six-month-old, both of them in diapers. I was up to my eyeballs in diaper changes and poop. And I can assure you, on that New Year's Eve, 2009, Mama was sleeping probably very early. There was no ringing in the new year for me. Back up 10 years before that, it was 1999. Party like it's 1999. Okay, 1999. I had just finished my first semester of my freshman year of college, and I was eagerly awaiting Y2K. Anybody else? Okay, the kids, all the kids are like, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Boys and girls, let me educate you. 1999 into the year 2000, they were certain our computers were all going to shut down. They weren't going to work. It wasn't, life was just not going to continue the same. So we all stayed up in eager anticipation. And guess what happened? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happened. Technology only advanced more. Okay, back up 10 years before that, it was 19. 89. I was eight years old. Any other people eight years old in 1989? In 1989. Okay. No one? No one? No? Okay. 1989. Um, I was eight years old. Had gotten some pretty cool presents for Christmas. Let's look at, let's go down a little memory lane. Shall we? Let's look up here. What kind of gifts do we have? The Game Boy was the big gift. All of the children need to look up here right now. It was $89. That might as well have been a million dollars back then. It was black and white. Very pixelated, but you could carry that bad boy wherever. There were no chargers. You had to put new batteries in that thing. Anybody else loving the Tetris? I was the Tetris. Yes, my Tetris people. Anybody still got a Game Boy? Yeah. I need to borrow it and Tetris. The little music, the music was like kind of fuzzy on the Game Boy, but it was the coolest thing. So for all of your children out there, your fancy pants Xbox Ones and Nintendo Switches and uh, what's that other thing? PlayStation. We're the real OG in here. Okay. <laughs> right there. Right there. Okay, let's look at another gift from 1989. My Little Pony. Ooh! I loved my little ponies and people in marketing are super smart because they brought my little ponies back because I although I don't have girls but if you have girls you're probably like oh I played with my little pony I'm buying that for my daughter let's look at something else I had her I had that Barbie right there with that pink skirt and that white this was the dance club I had her as soon as I found this picture I'm like that's going I had her Oh, she's rotting in a landfill somewhere. Okay, let's keep going. Guys, this was the fashion in 1989. Gentlemen, I'm so sorry that I did not put the um, stone-washed denim, very baggy with the baggy coats on here for you. And is there any Teddy Ruxpin? Does anybody remember Teddy Ruxpin? 
guys. So who had a Teddy Ruxpin? Oh, it was so, it's so creepy looking now, but it was awesome then. There was nothing cuddly about Teddy Ruxpin because he was full of parts and he moved and he talked and you put a cassette tape. Boys and girls, you can talk to your mom and dads what a cassette tape is. Later, they'll explain it to you fully. But, oh, and then these things right here, down here, the little triangular things down here in the front. I didn't have a um, unicycle, but I had, I don't even know what those things were called. But you sat on them, and you put your feet up, and you were all over the place. It was incredible. Oh, and sit and spin, a good time to throw up. Do they still have those, sit and spins? They do? Okay, they still do. So that's, that was 1989. Now, let's go 10 years before that. I heard it. In 1979, I wasn't even thought of. But Pastor Brian was a cute and squishy 18-month-old, just really super cute in 1979. Who was born in 1979 in here? We have some 1979ers. That means you turned 40 this year. Happy birthday to you. Okay. <clears throat> So as we close out this decade and we go into a new decade, just from our walk down memory lane, we know that the future is bright. Things change. Toys change. Thank goodness fashion changes. <laughs> but it's got me thinking about new goals for the future. It's got me thinking about a refocus, reset, refresh. It's a great time to just begin to self-reflect. I love reflection, and I love for it to propel me into the new year. There I am. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't always love applying what I learn from my reflection. It's okay. We'll figure it out. You can still see me, this ambiance up here. I don't always love applying what I learn in my reflection. And my reflection is wrong if I'm not including Jesus in that equation. I need to be digging into the word, seeking him in prayer to find out, Lord, what is within me and things that I'm doing that I need to change? Reflection causes change, and change hurts. And it's hard, and hard hurts. And all of the things. But it's okay. The point of reflection is to make better choices in the future. So it got me to thinking, what does 10 years from now look like? It'll be 2029, 10 years from right now. I will be almost 50 years old. <sighs> I'll have a 22-year-old a 20-year-old, and an almost 18-year-old. I'm going to be staring down the road of an empty nest, and I'm going to be at a completely different time in my life than I am right now. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. She said, <laughs> Trish is like, party! I intend to. But my next 10 years, I want to do it well. I want to be the best wife that I can be. I want to be the best mom that I can be. I've got not even 10 full years with my babies left, well, with the youngest one, but the other two for me to shoot them as arrows into the world and to do it well. And if I don't take time for reflection, and if I don't take time to dig into the word, I'm going to do it completely from the flesh. And my flesh is ugly, guys. It's ugly. And I don't want that because I'm going to be releasing these children into the world. And I don't want to hit an empty nest and say, what am I supposed to do with my life? I want to be constantly pursuing the Lord and constantly pursuing what does he want me to do in this life. I want my life to display Christ. Is what I'm doing accomplishing this, or am I letting flesh, my flesh, rule the day? What about you? 
Is reflection part of your story, or do you run from it with everything that you have? Because reflection causes change, and change causes fear, and we will have no part of that. But honestly, true reflection, honest reflection creates positive change in your life. Does the change scare you? Because change scares me. This terrifies me. Planting a church and leading a church terrifies me. If you need somebody that is not terrified by this, there are some other churches in town you may find that they aren't terrified, but I surely doubt it because we're humans. But in my fear, there is Jesus always there and walking in obedience with him. Kids, did you hear that I said Jesus? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I hope you're writing it down. I have a reflection question for the message today. Are we living in such a way that people see and feel Jesus within us? Christmas is over. Some of you have taken down your trees. You're done and over. But the Christmas story lives on forever. So let's look at the Christmas story right now. Let's go to the book of Luke. Um, in Luke 1, we find Mary, and Mary is a young lady, and um, she is not married yet, but engaged to be married, and an angel comes to her and says, uh, you are going to be pregnant and carry a baby. Uh, come here, Alex. Um, and you are um, going to carry the Savior of the world, okay? So this is my friend Alex, but today she's Mary. And Alex has got a super, she gives me permission to do this. Don't write emails because I've already asked. She's got a super cute, teeny tiny little baby in here. I imagine that where we pick up in the story today, this might be how Mary looked. Cute, sweet little baby bump. And then I have my friend Diasana. Come here, my love. She's a little further along. When are you due? June? June. When are you due? March. See? Um, come on, my, my love. This is Diasana, and today she is going to be Elizabeth, and I've asked for permission too, and these babies are going to know me because I talk to them all the time. This is Auntie Ashley. I love you. You're on stage today. Yay! So here's where we're going to kind of pick up with this. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Mary greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in, leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice, I love this, Elizabeth must have been like me, she was loud. Um, in a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears... The baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. How cool is that? Let's take that for just a minute and look at it, how it applies to our life right now. The Jesus in Mary, who is not seen, was felt by the spirit and the child in Elizabeth. How do people see the Jesus who lives within you? Because right now, if you are a Christ follower, he's living in you. His spirit lives within you. And in your very presence, can others see and feel him? Thank you, my beautiful pregnant friends. Thank you for growing the church organically. And... Um, <laughs> your head around that? Does your very presence cause people to say, oh, there is something different about them because Jesus lives within you? Are we living in such a way that people see and feel Jesus within you? Here's what the Bible says about God in us. We know that God is the Trinity. Godhead, three in one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's our incredible God. It's hard to explain, but I think of it like a stool, a three-legged stool 
that stool's going to fall over without one of those legs. All three of those legs are essential to make that one stool. Just like our God is three in one. And the Bible tells us that our body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. Let's look in Romans 8. 8 9 says, You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. Verse 10 says, But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. Again, God in you. Verse 11 says, And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. Are you picking up what the Bible is laying down? It's repeated so many times right there. Your body, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives and dwells within you. Do others see and feel him when you are around? So what does it look like when we're around? Do we have to be like, Jesus lives within me. Notice him. There's this really cool book in the Bible, um, Galatians, Galatians 5. I encourage you, I can't read the whole thing this week because, I mean today, because we would be here for three hours, and I want you all to be able to enjoy family time and lunch together today, so I'm going to condense it. Um, Go read Galatians 5 this week. It's where Paul is talking to us about living in the flesh versus living in the spirit. It's a great, great book, but we're going to pick up right here at verse 22. And this is what Paul says to the Galatians. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you've been in Kids Spring, you know that song. And it's awesome. Every single time I read it, I'm singing it in my head. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. This is walking by the Spirit. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. If the Spirit lives within us and we're walking in step with the Spirit, that's what's going to be seen. And people are going to notice, especially in a sinful and a broken world where people live by their flesh. If you're living and showing and bearing the fruit of the Spirit naturally because it just rises up in you because Jesus lives within you, that's going to come overflowing. And people are going to say, well, there's something different about that person. And the more time they spend with you, the more Jesus they get to see and the greater opportunity that one day in their complete brokenness, they're going to come to you because they don't have a clue where else to go. And they're going to say, there is something different about you and I need help. It happens and it's beautiful. Are you living in such a way that people see and feel Jesus within you? If the spirit of God lives within you, what is the life you are displaying? Are you displaying a life that is driven by the flesh? Showing fruit of the flesh, envy, jealousy, anger. Or are you displaying a life that shows the fruit of the Spirit? How are you keeping in step with the Spirit? So today I've got three practical ways that if you call the Springs Church your home, you can apply. We've got friends from Texas. Yay, the Hoseys are here today. We've got friends from Tennessee that are here today. If you're visiting from out of town and you came to church this Sunday, A, thank you so much, and B, take this back to your churches. And if the Springs Church, your home, I'm going to invite you in to apply these things within walls and outside of these four walls in 2020. The first thing is 21 days of prayer and fasting. Pastor Rory alluded to this already. 
But the spiritual discipline of fasting completely impacted my life. It was during a time of, of fasting that the Lord spoke very clearly to Brian and me as we were desperately seeking him. What did he want to do with our life? So we have incorporated fasting twice a year, every single year, into this church body. And it has been incredible to watch people join together that never fasted before in their life to now they're like gearing up for it because they know that it is life changing. So why all do we fast? Well, let's look at Matthew 6, 16. Jesus was talking and he said, when you fast... Dot, 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 dot. I don't, I'm not even putting anything else up there right now. Because I want you to look at these three words. When you fast. He didn't say, if you feel like fasting. If you want to fast. If you're up for it this time. He didn't say, if, or if you want to. He said, when you fast. So this is a spiritual discipline that the Lord Jesus himself has called us to. Then let's skip ahead to Matthew 9, 14, and 15. John, who John was in Elizabeth's belly over earlier. John has grown up now, and his disciples come to Jesus, and they're like, Jesus, why do your disciples not fast? I can just imagine this, like, ugh. Why do they not have to fast? Complaining and murmuring. It's so much. And this is what Jesus said. He said, how can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? Jesus is the bridegroom. He's referring to himself. He's like, I'm with them. How can they mourn when I'm with them? I'm with them right now. But then he says, the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. And look at those last four words. Then they will fast. Fasting requires sacrifice from our bodies. And our flesh is strong. My flesh wants Rolos, Dr. Pepper, all the sugar, bread. I love bread, pizza, all the things. My flesh enjoys screen time. My flesh enjoys watching a mindless movie. Doesn't require anything of me. But a time of fasting says you need to kill your flesh for a set period of time where it's an outward physical expression of I need you, Jesus, more than I need any of these other things. And I am desperate for you that I'm willing to kill my flesh and the desires of my flesh in order to hear from you and meet with you. There are so many different fasts that you can do, and we actually have a fast um, booklet online. You can go and print it off. Or if you do not have an, a way to print it off, Layla will be in the office this week. You can call her, and she will be glad to print one off for you and come by and pick it up because the fast begins next Sunday. So get ready and ask the Lord, what do you want me to do? Ask him to reveal to you, what is the Lord that I run to instead of you? Am I running to food for comfort? Am I running to the screen for comfort? What am I running to instead of you? Because I want to kill that over the next 21 days. And this fasting guide will help you. Now, kiddos, the Bible doesn't say only adults have to fast. What? Parents, this is the prime time. We're raising our children to be arrows, to point them into the world, to make mighty differences for the Lord. And right now, we can instill spiritual habits into them, even when they're little. My boys have given up sweets before. That's been ultra fun when all the birthdays come in January. And my kids have been able to go to birthday parties, and they know I'm not eating that cake because I gave it up for Jesus. It's only 21 days. 
one of the biggest and best fasts in our house is the screen fast. <laughs> Children love the screen. They love it. They get lost in their video games. They talk to their friends through these video games. They love a good movie. They've got all the technology that in 1989, when we were playing with the Game Boy, they'd be like, this is boring. But they've got it. But my guys have been able to enter a time of prayer and fasting where they've laid aside those screens for three weeks. And we also have a kid's guide to fasting on our website, and it's super cool. So go check that out and talk with your kiddos. Help them, guide them. Don't be afraid. They will survive if they go 21 days without sugar. They will survive if they go 21 days without the screen. Maybe that's a fast for you too, and you guys just do it together. Now, number two, practical way. Serve one, attend one. Pastor Rory alluded the fact that we are going to two services on February 2nd. And if you call the Springs Church your home, I like that, Pastor Adam. Woohoo! This is super exciting because what it means is more opportunity for life change. It's what it means. Making more room, providing more chances for life change. And when we launched this church five years ago in January, we sent out thousands of postcard thingies in the mail, inviting people and praying over that, Pray, praying over those. I know that we have the Wingfields that received one of those postcards. Anybody else in this room right now that received one of those postcards? I'm going to say every last ounce, every last dollar, every last postcard that went out and the fruit that we reaped was the Wingfields, was worth it. Because I have watched them grow mightily in the Lord in the past five years. I've watched them bring up their children. I've watched them plug into serving in places that they never thought they would ever plug in to serve. And they've also been an insanely incredible support for Brian and me, seeing us as humans and supporting us and loving us along the way. And we're about to send out 25,000 more relaunch, come grow with us postcards that are going to be hitting the mail in January. And I'm asking you right now that during this 21 days of prayer and fasting that you're praying for the people that those postcards hit their mailboxes. Because some of them are asking right now, what am I supposed to do with my life? I don't want to continue this decade the way that I did before. And I believe that the Lord can divinely get that yeah. postcard to their mailbox at just the right time. And I believe that he can anoint those and people go, huh, I think I'm going to try this. But we want there to be space for them when they come here. In your, in your worship guide today, are these come kind of grow with me cards, and we have a lot more of them. Do you have a relationship with a person that um, is always the cashier person at Smith's, and you've gotten to know them? I've got a relationship with a chick that brings my click list out to my car each week. I love her. <laughs> I've developed a relationship with her, and I can give her one of these. I can slap a candy bar on there and say it's super sweet on Sundays and be corny like that. I don't know. But I can do it because the Lord has brought her into my life. Can you give these to neighbors? Can you leave them on the drive through thing at Wendy's? Yes, because I believe that God divinely intersects our lives. And somebody who is searching, they don't know Jesus. They're saying, maybe I need to try God. I need to, and where do people go when they say, ah, maybe I need to try God? They're not thinking, I need to go to my neighbor. They're thinking, I need to go to a church. And so we've got this place here that the Lord has blessed us with, and let's open it wide and get ready for the harvest. And we cannot do that without you. It's impossible to do that without you, without every single one of you in this room. If you're visiting, we covet your prayers when you leave here knowing that God is doing great things in the Las Vegas Valley. We need your prayer support. 
But if you call the Springs Church your home, I am asking you, I am pleading with you, and I am charging you to link arms with us and use your gifting that the Lord has given you. Use your ability that the Lord has given you and serve one service and attend the other. It may not even be that way every week. You may not have to serve every single week. If everybody in this room said, sign me up, I'm serving. We would not need every single one of you to serve every single week. We could do a beautiful rotation. And if I can be super honest with you, there are some people in this room that serve four Sundays a week. They come here on Saturday. They have, they have said, Lord, I am yours and do with me. And they might be a little tired. But if each one of you would link arms with us, they're going to get a little bitty break. Because they're not going to quit serving. They would have stopped a long time ago if they didn't like it. But still, we need a rest sometimes. So serve one, sit one. And I know some of you are thinking, right now, I have a gift. There's nothing I can do. I can't do that. There's nothing I can do. False. Right now. Can you smile? Can you say hello? Yes, you can. I just saw the most handsome smile back here. He needs to be on our greeting team. Because people that walk into this church need to be greeted with love because they've probably had such a stinky week and they drug themselves here. What an amazing place to come and receive a smile and maybe an Olaf warm hug. (laughs) If you can smile and you can say hi, we need you. Do you have muscles that you can lift things with? Yeah. We need you to carry signs to the sidewalk and to the street before service. And then we need you to go get the signs from the street and the sidewalk and put them away after service. It's really, really, really super sensible. And it's a workout. It's really not bad. I put my 12-year-old on it today to help. And he did a great job. Small act of serving. Well, that doesn't make a big difference. Yes, it does. I've driven past my own church for getting to turn in here because I didn't know where it was. If a new person goes, I'm going to go find the Springs Church. If they're approaching it and they see all the signs, turn here, park here, do this, it's going to bring them a whole lot more comfort. Do it for the one who may be a nervous wreck to walk in here. Make it easy for them. Can you sing? Can you play an instrument? Are you passionate about worship? I'm passionate about worship. I cannot sing. I cannot play an instrument. I don't need to be up here. But I'll be down there passionate about worship. But if you can sing or you can play an instrument or you can do both of those and you're passionate about worship and not a concert but worship, the worship team needs you. Can you change a diaper? Yes! Can you get goofy with preschoolers and listen to their prayer requests that never end? It's awesome. They've told me, I'm not done yet. Okay. Okay. It's a blast and a half. They do not care if you cannot dance. They think you're the coolest person ever if you are dancing with them. It doesn't matter if you are, you know, just doing this. They don't care. Can you hang out with elementary kids? Can you talk with them, spend time with them, sit on the floor and play a game with them? Share a Bible story with them? Keep an eye on them? Kids bring needs you. Do you feel like you're a protector at heart? Like you want to protect people? We live in a world where we need protection all the time. And we have a really cool team here called the Watchmen. And they're in here right now. And they're watching out to make sure we're safe. Doesn't that bring a lot of comfort? It's awesome. Do you want to be incognito and be a Watchman? We need you. Do you feel like the Lord has called you to teach the word? And you got to shove that down because I cannot do that. We need you as a life group leader. You don't have to know everything. I don't know everything. I studied my pants off for this today. But it's all right because a life group leader just facilitates and asks questions. Well, what do you think this says? You don't have to know it all. Brian will say, I have not a clue. I don't know. But you and I can both study that together. Do you have a home? Because if you have a home, we need host homes. 
So what we can do is, I don't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm pleading with you to say, I can, I can, I can. We want to put you in the place where you're like, I'm passionate about that. But sometimes the Lord asks us to do things that are going to stretch us. I venture to say that when the angel of the Lord came to Mary and said, Mary, your gift is you're going to carry the Savior of the world as a virgin, I'm pretty sure she wasn't like, yeah, Lord, that's exactly what I wanted to do. (laughs) But she said yes anyway. And because of Mary's yes, all of our lives are changed. Was she ridiculed for her serving? Yeah, she sure was. I guarantee you, because people back then, they weren't any better than us today. I'm sure they were like, oh my gosh, have you seen Mary? She's pregnant and she's not married yet. Can you even believe it? I'm sure they blazed their eyes of judgment through her. But they didn't call her. God did, and she said, let it be to me, as you have said. She said yes. So maybe you don't know exactly what your gift is, but can you say yes to a place of need? Can you get plugged in? Can you commit to serving one and sitting one? And can I please say, we understand things come up, but when you commit, will you commit Will you let your yes be yes and your no be no? Instead of, yes, I'm going to do it. And then, well, I don't, like how, I don't like what this church is doing to me, so I'm just I'm not doing that anymore. Guys, this is not about ourselves. This is about a greater purpose. This is not fluff, and I've said it before. This is not a cruise ship. We try to make it nice, and we try to do things with excellence for Jesus. But the heart underlying everything that we do is to reach people for Jesus and to help them grow in their walk. We don't want to just reach people and be done with them. We want everybody that walks into this place to grow as disciples. I have absolutely, I could start calling out names of people that I'm looking at right now, that I've known you for the past five years, and I've watched you grow and grow and grow in your relationship with Jesus. You're raising your children differently than how you were raised. You're choosing to make a difference. You're choosing to say yes. You're choosing to dig into the word. You're choosing to do spiritual disciplines that you never did before, like fasting. And you're growing, and you're changing, and it's incredible. But we have to link arms, and we have to do it together. If we rely on just a few to do it, they're going to get tired. And they're going to be done. Because they need people to come and come up beside them. If it were just Brian and me doing this and doing everything all the time, I promise you, we would have been done a long time ago because we were never called to do it all by ourselves. So today on your connection card, If you say, yes, I'm in, sign me up, I want to serve, you can write the area you want to serve in, write it on there, kids can serve too, yes, oh, I wanted to also say this, I forgot, do you guys guys like clean toilets, oh, it's so nice to have a clean toilet, right, can you clean a toilet, yes, We have this amazing housekeeping team. We have a volunteer team that comes and cleans this church. It is not resourced out to a cleaning team. It is people that are worshiping the Lord by scrubbing the toilets. Do you guys like coming to a clean church? Yes. Nobody wants to go somewhere where there's filth. When somebody is coming over to your house, do you, like a new guest, do you clean? Because you don't want them to be coming to a house of filth? Yes. You can join that team. And kiddos, listen. Can you smile and say hi to people? Cool. You can join the hospitality team and pass out. There is nothing cuter than kids passing out worship guides and saying hello to you. 
Middle schoolers, high schoolers, do you like techie stuff? Anybody, if you like techie stuff. Kevin Pollard is the man, production, talk to him. We need people back there pressing buttons. You don't want me back there. I'll do it if the Lord tells me to. I'll learn it. But things are going to get all messed up, and I'm going to be worshiping, and the slides are not going to be changing, and it's going to be crazy. But kids, teenagers, do you like techie stuff? They need you back there. Kids, can you wash windows? We need you. Kids can serve too, and it's another way that we train up our children in the way they should go. We live in an entitled country. Me, 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 me. Maybe 2020 is the year that we say it's not me, 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 me. But it's him, 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 him. And I'm serving, 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 serving. And my kids are going to be too. So on your connection card, you could say, sign me up. Here's where I'd like to be. Or put me in, coach. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play bump, bump today. Those are my people. Sing it with me. Okay. My last thing. Yana Wood, if you'll come on up and see, Yana Wood can play. I can't play. I'd love to just sit down and start strumming on the guitar in my dreams in heaven. One day I will. We ask you to please invest in people. You've heard it said many times, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so today I challenge you to ask the Lord, send me someone who doesn't know you. Send me somebody that needs to grow as a disciple of the Lord. Bring them to me, Lord. Show them to me. And then you can't just bombard them. Hey, Jesus loves you. Come to church. They're probably not going to come. But if you invest in them, even if it's the girl at the click list pickup and you ask her how her week has been, every single time you go and she begins to get to know you, and then one day you just say, hey, we got a really cool church with super real people who really love Jesus. We find so much peace and hope in our Lord. We've grown so much there. I, here's an invite. I would love for you to come and I will save you a seat. Invest and invite and make it contagious. Make it contagious. You don't have to go and save an entire nation. All he wants us to do is have relationship and one by one by one, the harvest will begin to come. And those people will fall in love with Jesus. They will plug into serving and then they're gonna say, hey, my life was changed in the Smith's parking lot. because somebody said something to me about Jesus. Can you imagine what 2020 will look like if you give your life in 2020 over to the Lord? Like, I'm not talking patty cake. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll leave my mind. No, I mean like spiritually, big time. Like all in. Like I'm not going to dip my toe in the water, Lord, but I'm all in with you. I'm going to fast and pray. I don't have a clue what I'm doing, God, but I'm going to do it because I want to kill this flesh and get closer to you. God, it's time for me to serve. It's time for me to say I am all in, and it doesn't matter, Lord, if you call me to serve by washing windows or cleaning toilets or singing on stage or leading a group or changing diapers, and I really don't want to, but I'm doing it for you, God. And then you just wait for how lives are changed because you said, yes, let it be done unto me as you said, just like Mary said. Let's allow God to work in us so that he can work through us in the power of the Holy Spirit in the 2020s. As we say goodbye to this decade, we can say goodbye to every sin, every regret, every bit of shame and we can say I'm a new creature in the Lord 
I'm a new creation in Christ, and I'm going to make a difference for him.